Hey guys, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. So I'm bringing you another video. This one's gonna be about sawing contraction joints and controlling shrinkage cracks in concrete floors and slabs. You know, why do we have to saw cut joints in there? Well, it's concrete's pretty much guaranteed to crack somewhere, no matter what. It just seems like that's the way, that's the characteristics of this stuff, so. What we do is we saw cut down about a quarter of an inch, as you can see in this picture here on my website. And what that does is it makes the slab crack in that saw cut. And it keeps the, it keeps the slab or the floor or whatever you saw cut and look really nice and clean and professional looking. You know, we don't want random cracks just developing anywhere. So that's why we, we pull out the saw and we saw cut joints in all our floors and slabs. Now what we use, we're using the Husqvarna soft cut, it's the X150 Prowler. And we can saw cut the same day, and that's why we use this saw, so we don't have to go back to the job the next day and get the saw cuts in. I'll have a link for that down in the description guys if you want to check that out. Um, it's definitely worth the money, I highly recommend this saw, it's, it's real easy to use as you'll see here, Luke using it on this garage. And uh, it's probably the best saw that we've ever used. So for the money, it's definitely worth it. It'll pay for itself in just a few floors, really. What we do is, you know, he, he just drops that down in there. We'll, we'll lay out the floor. We'll snap our chalk lines. And then he just eyes the, he eyes it using the gauge on the, on the soft cut saw. The saw does come with a flip down gauge. But, but these guys, I don't know, Luke and Darren, they just don't really like the flip down part. So they use... They use the sight right on the front, almost like on the barrel of a gun. They use that front sight, and that's what they go by. They just feel like it's more accurate that way. And then when they turn around and go the other way, same thing. They line up the back. There's a little V in the back where the center of the blade is, and then the sight on the front. And then you can drop it right in there and just keep going. There's a center drain in this garage slab. It's a little hard to see here in the picture, but that's why he stopped right in the center. He didn't want to cut through the drain. So he's going to cut these four joints in here. You know, make sure you stick around for the end of the video. I got some really cool insight as to when we we uh, cut these joints and just how fast you can do it after you pull the power trowel off. I've got I've got a few other jobs on here, and I think you're going to find that's really cool. Yeah, you can see how Luke just kind of eyes that. He can get it, you know about as straight as humanly possible by doing it by eye like that. You can see the little sight he's using. Once you do a few of them, you get used to it. And you know, we we found that the drop down the drop down bar on this, that thing was about 18 inches long. It was just a, it just vibrated a little bit. And we didn't like the way it vibrated and there was no real good way to keep it tight. So we just took it off and just use the front sight. You can see the little bit of dust that, that uh, saw makes when it saws. It's really not dusty as far as being in the air. It kind of kind of puts the dust right there on the floor and then you can boom it up. Makes it real easy to boom up. The blade on this thing is six and a half inches and it goes about an inch and a quarter deep. So on four inch floors like this, it's perfect really. You know, if you're pouring a six inch floor, I mean, technically you're supposed to go a quarter inch to depth, but if you saw this early in the process, we've never had a problem with six inch floors cracking in the saw joint. So for, for us, we use it on all our four inch and six inch thick stuff. The good thing about the saw is though, it's light enough so one guy can pick it up too if he needs to. And you know, if you got to put it down in the basement or, or lift it up in the truck, you know, one guy can do it really easily. Anything bigger and you're going to need two guys. Husqvarna, they, they make all kinds of size saws, different size saws, but this one is probably the most convenient for everybody, whether you're doing residential stuff or light commercial stuff. You can see how quick you can saw a cut. We've got an electric one too that we use occasionally. Actually, I've got two of them, but the guys really love this one. They like this one the most. 
Yeah, it just takes him a few seconds to line that up. Then he drops it down. And then, you know, when we saw this green, it really cuts good. The, the saw cut doesn't really ravel either because we got, you know, if you got a brand new um, cutting edge, brand new diamond blade on there, and then you got the skid plate, a good new skid plate. The cuts are pretty clean. Otherwise, we wouldn't cut. You know, we're not going to damage the floor and ravel that joint if it's not going to be the best job for the customer. So, you just got to keep a new skid plate on there. The blades, we, as far as lineal footage, we seem to get about a thousand lineal feet out of each blade. All right, so it's 1240. If you remember, we started power troweling at 11 o'clock. We got done pouring the concrete at 830. So about four hours later here, we're sawing it. That's how fast this stuff dries in the summer. So, you know, if you're thinking of doing this yourself, you got to really be prepared. You got to know what you're doing. And we always saw our expansion joints in the same day. That's why we got that saw. That's a special saw for doing it green. You can saw them in the next day. You know, I'd do it early the next morning if I was sawing them the next day, but we have that soft cut saw we do. We saw them in the same day, that's why we have the saw. But it's hard enough to saw. You can see we got all the forms stripped off already. This has styrofoam all the way around it and under it. So by the time, from the time we got done pouring, 8.30 until we're done and sawing, it, it was only about four hours. That's how fast this stuff dries. It's 12 p.m. It's noontime, and we're just starting to saw the house. So, four hours after we got done pouring the concrete, we're sawing it, and we had to wait about two hours to get on it with a power trowel. So at 10 o'clock, we get on it with a power trowel. About 11:30, 11:45, it's all done being power troweled. At least the house is. 12 o'clock, we're snapping chalk lines and sawing in the contraction joints. Still got a little bit left to go in the garage. Garage is almost done. That back part is done. The front part I got in about another half an hour and that'll be done. And you can see we saw our contraction joints in the same day. That way it's more likely to crack in those joints than if we wait until the next day. That, that saw blade goes down about an inch and a quarter deep and it just scores the concrete so it gives it a relief cut when concrete dries like this when it dries fast like this it shrinks and when it's shrinking it causes stress on the concrete and that's how you get you know just random cracking so we're trying to control that random cracking by cutting in these joints and giving it a place to crack so it just doesn't do it wherever it wants it's more likely to do it off those re-entrant corners right there see that corner so we got that one there's one up there there's one up there there's another one there that's where it's going to crack first. So we always cut our joints off those corners. So it's about 12.30. We're just finishing up the garage. i got to buzz this edge one more time. It's got just a little bit of fuzz on it. But it's hard enough so we can saw. So we're getting, we're getting a part of the saw that we can. So 12.30. Again, we started pouring here at 6.30 this morning. It's 12.30 now, so six hours from start to finish, and we got this 40-yard house and garage floor all done. So as you can see, we don't wait to saw. I mean, once we get done troweling, we're putting that saw on and cutting those joints in, and that's I think that's one of the reasons why we've controlled you know, our cracks and our floors really, really well. We have very minimal cracking. Um, just occasionally you'll get one developed somewhere where you look at it and go I don't I have no idea why that crack here, but for the most part this this saw does it it controls cracks in concrete and That's why we got it. and That's why we use it And you know 
it cuts them in so fast that you could you could make sure you have plenty of your cuts in and in place and then uh, you know you're done you leave and go to the next job and you don't come back to this one so when I first started 40 years ago you know we didn't have these saws we'd always have to come back the next day it was just a lot of extra travel you would show up back the next day and sometimes the floor would already be cracked so we have no more of that you can see all the cuts we're putting in something like this and especially off these re-entrant corners right there where Luke is, it always cracks off those. Just finishing up, getting all the sawing done. About 1, 1 p.m. Started here at 7 a.m. pouring. Got one last joint. Got the garage all sawed. That's it, guys. I hope you learned something. Uh, like and share, and thanks again. I'll see you on the next one.